Hey everybody, welcome to the paint stream. Uh, it's me, John, and I am still working on my troll army for Age of Sigmar. And by trolls, I mean Trogoths, because they are differently named uh, than what they were in the old world. And what I am currently doing is dry brushing some details. Um, I was originally going to sit here and edge highlight every single stone um, on this guy's back, but uh, since it's stone and I have to paint how many more of these guys, uh, I think it's 12 of these all together, um, I'm going for a little bit quicker route and doing uh, a dry brush of sanguine highlight and then a dry brush of uh, pink core and then I might come in either with a, uh, a purple glaze or um, potentially a third highlight of carnal pink um, it just kind of depends I might end up doing both and a lot of it's going to be done because um, I'll have to wait to see to kind of see how the final highlight goes and also be sure to make sure your hands are dry as you're doing this. You don't want to miss on a different area. And when I'm talking about the purple glaze, the idea is to tint the color more towards this purple than it would be to darken it. Um, the big thing is I just want a, a small color shift across the, um, the, the stone to the skin, like I've kind of established, um, but reinforce it. And then also um, with like a glaze or a wash after this, it will reduce the dustiness that I'm applying with this dry brush. And the whole, the whole plan, as I said, was to make sure I get these models done. Um, I do not want to sit here and kind of lament uh, another unfinished project. So the plan is to actually, you know, do techniques and things like that to get them to a point in which I'm happy with them on a tabletop. Um, but the fact is that I want to have a fully painted army for all of my games in 2019. So I already have it with War Machine and Hordes, which is really good, uh, but I need to desperately work on Age of Sigmar and then also uh, Warhammer 40k. How many images do you have left in this army? Um, still around 20. Like, I I'm almost done building them. Okay. It's painting them is going to be a little bit, a little bit protracted. Um, this first batch was kind of the test as it were. So um, I'm hoping the next wave of models um, will be larger. It will be a larger wave that I'm painting. And then it will also um, hopefully go quicker because I'm learning as I go, right? So I am learning techniques and uh, kind of how I want things painted and done. So a lot of that like step, hopefully for the next group of guys, will be already done. So, And I am probably going to highlight this up one more shade, but then hit it with that uh, piggy purple ink from Privateer Press, just so I darken it up and these guys have like a nice glossy ridged back. So they'll kind of look like, hopefully like gem-ish, like okay. uncut uh, or roughly cut gems. I, okay, so because they've been because they've been mines that have like other water or those gems, so for so long it's been embedded. Fall. Yeah, they the, the, the stone dust is on those. Yeah, well, the trolls um, are so adaptable that they end up taking on uh, appearances or uh, portions of the environment that they're in. Mm -hmm. So they are usually reflective of where they were, and so. I really want them to look like they were living in this like really kind of rich gem-filled mine of like amethyst. Mm -hmm. 
which will be kind of cool. So on the base, um, I've put like some stalagmites and like a little bit of crystals on some of them and all that kind of cool stuff. But I'm going to be coming back with um, a lot of hopefully like bright colors and maybe some like different tones on the base than maybe you weren't expecting. Like it's going to be predominantly gray, but I like to achieve that gray through a variety of colors. Nice. Yeah, so like that's my plan. Um, we'll see how it works. So, yeah, I definitely think you should uh, get, get done with the army. Yeah, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep on asking about it, just keep you honest. Yeah, no, please do. Um, one of the big things about doing like a full army, kind of like the, the Trogoths that I'm doing right now, or the um, like Thousand Suns that I'll be doing afterwards, is just keeping motivation, um, not getting distracted by the next new shiny thing. Um, I also need to finish my Monster Apocalypse army this year. I forgot about that. Joe, how could you let me forget? Stay away from the coach of the new. Right, it's, uh, well, it's something that's really inherent in um, like miniature gaming yeah. nowadays. Like there's just, so much cool stuff coming out at all times it is so hard to you know keep keep focus um but you know we uh we persevere we we figure things out we move forward um i'm mixing up a final highlight which is a mix of p3's kernel ink or not uh kernel pink not kernel ink and pink horror um, from Games Workshop. Uh, Carnal Pink is like a very white pink, um, almost to the point where you lose a lot of the pinkiness of it uh, with the camera because it's so close to white. Um, but the idea is that we apply it um, very sparingly, little quick strokes and brushes to get that really kind of light highlight on just the tips of the gems or the rocks however you want to go about it whatever one makes you feel better saying um, and this is the last step I will probably do before I hit them with that piggy purple ink that I hope is in my bag if not we have some here at the store so we will figure that out did you so, get all the uh, dinosaur figures from Mon uh, I, I have all of them, however, they were releasing a, a new wave of them in March, so I have to kind of prep for that, and I want to finish all the ones I have um, as quickly as possible. Kind of like a, a personal reward for yeah. buy the new ones. So what, can, what new uh, types are they coming out with? Um, so it's, it's not as expansive, there is a new monster. Okay. named Armadax, and he is fashioned after a large ankylosaur. Ankylosaurs are the ones with the protective plates on their backs with the large club tail. Um, okay. They were an herbivore. Um, I want to say they were in the Jurassic? I mean, like, they're in a lot of different periods, but... Um, one of the, the defining features outside of their club tail and uh, plates on their back was they also had these like wide, broad mouths. Um, think of them kind of like cow's mouths. Right. So they were grazers and things like that, and they had all these defensive spikes and all that, so uh, the big predators would leave them alone to uh, let them kind of graze as they please. Um, and they were pretty successful at it. They were... I can see why those uh, they, uh, the uh, private to first pick the private to first monk pop team pick them as a model because it's really good it has really good armor yeah. and a good weapon with a tail. Yep, and uh, it's a nice contrast to the first one that came out, which was fashioned after you know the theropod dinosaurs, which are um, the usually the the live uh, predators um, now. Um, there will be other ones coming down the line that we we've kind of seen some previews with the uh, art book that they did recently on Kickstarter um, we saw what's her name 
uh, Nova, I want to say. And she's part of the um, guard guys, but she'll be the third model for guard coming out, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah. All right, guys. So I did the, the last layer of dry brushing that I want to with this. And so what I'm going to be doing is looking for my piggy purple ink in my bag. Why do I have like three brown inks? Joe, what, what's going on? I have no idea. Oh, by the way, if you guys have any questions for John, please leave it in the ask in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to answer it. Yeah, I'm I'm here for you guys. Oh, yeah. Um. Cool. So no pinky purple ink, but we do have Druchi Violet from Games Workshop, and that'll work just fine. Um, it's a little bit more color neutral than the uh, ink I was looking for, but it should provide a good color change for the back scales and kind of shift it towards that purple that I want them to have. And you can see it's not getting rid of the, the highlights I put in, but once again it is making it a little bit more towards that purple. Um, so one of the things that I, um, like you know, you have to kind of come across quite a bit with these models. Um, especially with purples, there's not a lot of great range in purples in terms of the models themselves, like the, the model colors and all that. So when you are painting purples, you usually have to venture over into the magentas or even the blues to kind of uh, brighten it up. Um, but whenever you do that, you can use something like Druchi Violet or P3's Piggy Purple Ink, um, and you can tone it back to purple. And so this is what I'm using this Druchi Violet for. Um, and I'm not like slathering it on, I'm doing a thin uh, glaze with it. And what this will do is once again reestablish that purple and I will then be able to move on to the next step as soon as this dries. I actually found online the uh, color, like a color pa palette of all the Lego sets. Basically. Yeah, yeah, I remember you, you mentioned that to me. Um, and I was actually thinking getting one of the, um, one, one of my favorite sets going up was the Ice Planet 2002. Yeah, yeah. The colors were white, uh, ice blue, and orange. And I was thinking about buying from Legion that uh, Snow Trooper uh, radar dish. Uh, yeah. Radar, and then just painting them that color. Maybe, maybe, maybe painting my... Uh, Legion Squad, some of those colors of my favorite uh, mixture. Yeah, no, I, I think that will be a, a great idea. And uh, give it a shot and see how it turns out. I'm trying to I mean, be interesting to see how to find a, a nice, the arms they have on the uh, ice planet. It's, it was Cleo, they had yeah. the, uh, Cleo, so it's kind of. But anyway, yeah. So, um, so it's not necessarily a clear orange, mm -hmm. and it'll be difficult recreating a clear orange, especially with you starting out. Yeah. Um, but Prime Deer Press came out with Inferno Orange, which is this nice, gorgeous, like super bright orange. Uh, okay. And that will probably at least get close to what you are looking for. Oh, that, oh, that's good, as long as it's close, so. And then once again, like through application of shadows and highlights and things like that, you will get a nice convincing effect uh, for for your Ice Planet guys. I think my two favorite sets from going up were the uh, Ice Planet 2002 and the Aquas, Aquanauts. Something about Aqua. Uh, did you did you watch? Um, Man, Sequest was it? I did watch Sequest. Yeah, it was basically Star Trek in the ocean. Yes, I, lo I love the opening theme. Yeah, uh, I remember watching that a lot. Um, but that's what it always reminds me of, the, the Sequest line. I was always a big fan of the Martian one. Um, no, no, sorry, uh, of Legos. Back, oh. back to Legos. The Martian sets and then the medieval sets. Those were like, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, growing up, yep. yeah, growing up, yeah. uh, we just because we were Star Trek fans and Star Wars fans, we all my, my me and my brothers always levitated toward the space sets. Yeah, and we bought some town stuff, but yeah, it was a bit whatever. 
but then the night, the nights were fun. I enjoyed the pirates. We never really got a pirate ship. I always wanted one, but I think it was a bit too expensive for the space ones. Just, I, all yeah. the fond memories I have is just building my own, own spaceships and space fighters and capital ship. Fun. Yeah, that sounds like, cool. So. Yeah, so after, after glazing these guys with the uh, purple, I'm going to, one, make sure that the purple doesn't pull in any weird areas. Because like I said, I just want it to be a nice light glaze that is going to deepen the purpleness of it. And then um, I will probably move over to the trog boss for a little bit and work on the rock structure on his back. And from there, hopefully, once again, drop down to uh, the, uh, the rock guts right after that. But so yeah, for the, the uh, back of the um, trog boss, he's got this like little like stalagmite formation on him. I'm really tempted to do it kind of like an orangey brown, but I want a majority of the bases to be gray. So I might have to throw out the orangey brown and stick with a gray green, just so things remain consistent. Yeah, the um, boss said he built the Bowsaw Galactica sets back in the day. Oh, nice. And my uh, older brother actually built a captor ship that he uh, inspired from TIE Fighter. Yeah. Films, one of the carriers from TIE Fighter. So he got like six of the road plates as a runway and just built the walls around it. Oh, that's and really he cool. A bridge on top of it, suspended. And then he put all his ships in the chain. So that was fun. Yeah. All right. I am. Almost done with the rocks on number two. Yeah, Ross, work on some Age of Sigmar. We have a lot of guys playing now, um, and a lot of it's thanks to uh, Kai's League. Um, Isn't Kai having a tournament coming up? Or? Yeah, it is. It's coming up in March. Um, so the uh, it's kind of like the end of the league tournament. It'll be 1,250 points, so it'll be um, kind of that like mid-sized tournament which will be uh, really great for all those guys who have made it through the leagues. Um, I'm personally excited for it. Is that going to be a, on the weekend Saturdays? Or? Mm -hmm. It will be on a Saturday. Okay. Now they can find it on the face, uh, no, Facebook page? Facebook, yep. Okay. And then I believe also through our events portal. Okay. Cool. So, they also at Trail Bowl 11. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay. Well, I just know it's a Saturday. Yeah, it's on the uh, Facebook, so... But yeah, but I got some, uh, I've been working on my fire drawers and... Yeah, they've been looking good, too. Yeah, I was thinking about getting back, uh, but Sean told me that I was to, uh, he suggested that when I tackle the, uh, start painting the metals, to start yeah. with black, and then maybe, because, I think he said, if I remember correctly, that there was, the gray will show through a bit, so you mm -hmm. want the black to be kind of that background, that yeah. sort of background for the gray. Cause, and I have some gun gunmetal gray. I was thinking about using that. Well, make sure the gunmetal isn't just a metallic. Okay. So what paints did you suggest then? Well, I mean, like, if it's actually just a gray, then that's fine. Okay. But you want to make sure that it doesn't have those, like, metallic flakes in it. Okay. Because then it'll make whatever goes over it um, also go towards that metallic. Oh, I... So... Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, fire drawers are just mostly skin, so mm -hmm. Sean said it'll be easy to do it that way because you don't have to worry about Space Marines. I think he said it's a bit diff more, more challenging because of the, all the armor and the moving pieces. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, are you doing the gray for the metallics? Uh, I was thinking of doing the gray for like the armor and the axes. And oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It, yeah, if you're making a. If you're doing metallics over it, mm -hmm. for some reason my brain went to cloth. It's okay. so like you don't want metallic cloth, but you do want the armor and the uh, axes to read as metal. So using that gun metal as a base, the um, if it is like a metallic color, that will be fine. Right. Not to confuse you. That looks fine. Yeah. I just gotta find some time to go back and do it because <laughs> I've been busy this week. Ooh. Yeah, I think we've all been pr pretty busy this week. Yeah. So. Well, I don't know what I don't know what it was, man. But, the, but what is it up with the Georgia weather? Jeez, it's like... I'll be back to cold soon enough. Probably tonight. <laughs> um, I think it's supposed to be back over the weekend, which... So I don't know if that means tonight or tomorrow night or what. 
but you know. I don't. I don't understand it. Really, I feel sorry for weathermen and uh, weather, weather analysts in Georgia because they're like, they get a job down here and they're like, oh, we're going to Georgia. Well, there goes all my training. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. We're just gonna we're just gonna roll the dice because it's, you know it's just, it's just the same as. You know, it's all made up. It's all since so it's, it's just the same. <laughs> all right. So now I'm gonna work on the back scales. Or not the back scales. We just did the back scales. I'm going to be working on the rocks on the back of my Trogoth box boss, and so I'm using some Thornwood Green, and uh, what's that color I'm looking for? Joe will probably hit it for me. Ah, Crix Highlight. So, I cast me an the base color. Uh, for the trolls, um, the base color was a mix of Bogren Brown. Um, and Murderous Magenta. It's probably two-thirds Murderous Magenta or three-quarters Murderous Magenta to a quarter of Bogren Brown. And about the rain, Ross, I'm not surprised. Yeah. It's gonna rain. So, uh, for the back rocks, because this is what I'm probably going to do the same color as the base, so I want to do something that'll work well for like a nice little verdant uh, forest. So, I'm doing a 50-50 of Crick's Bane Highlight and Thornwood Green from P3. Seems like a good color. It's a nice little green gray. All right. And so we are painting the back stalagmites. And this might take a couple of applications. Um, and a lot of that will have to be because of I'm putting a almost greenish color over its natural uh, opposite, which is going to be that magenta. Oh, hey, Emily has joined us. And uh, so... This is actually applying pretty well. The coverage is pretty good. I might still have to do another coat or so, um, but the color is nice. It is currently contrasting with the, the skin tone. And that's the big thing that I want, is I want to make sure that it, it pops. So, I want this detail to stick out and the plan is to hit this with like a black brown wash whenever it settles and go, go from there. And so a lot of this is what I'm doing is um, it may be a little bit on the tedious side to watch, but uh, you really do have to pay attention to uh, all of the details that should be this like stalagmite color. Um, so he's got like little stone bits poking out um, at other points of his body, like stalagmites that might have broken off at an earlier point. Um, all that sort of good stuff and I am just going to hopefully take my time um, paint what I need to paint and then just be thorough and oh my god is that Chris Velez the Chris Velez watching one of my paint streams what is this world coming to I don't even know anymore. Um, for everyone who is here, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, really, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't do this. So I do appreciate any sort of comments, conversations, um, Emily style jabs at my uh, organization methods. We have so much. But yeah, so this is a quick, 
quick paint, make sure you lick your brushes because boy, did that taste not good. Uh, remind yourself why you shouldn't be doing that. And so one of those things where you're doing this effect or this design where you basically have rocks almost growing out of the skin, as you get closer to his actual back, you might want to think about feathering out the rock colors. Because I know I am. Um, and a lot of the reasons why I would do that is, uh, one, uh, without a... Because like a lot of this is like, they are just like popping right out of there, like just boom rock. And to me that's not supernatural because I feel like there'd be a lot of, oh, I want to keep saying creme because I've been listening to too much of the Stormlight series. Um, but I think that's a pretty accurate, like basically just kind of like rocky goo by the uh, bottom of it. Uh, so feathering um, is going to basically involve a thin paint, uh, a wet brush. It's basically two brush blending without the second brush and the effect is not going to be as probably smooth, but you will apply some wet paint to an area you want to be feathered. And I normally will, like, at the base of this, like, little rocky part right here, I'm going to apply some feathering or apply some wet paint here. And what I'm going to do is lick my brush and then start dragging my brush towards the mass in which I want to be the concentrated color. And so what it's doing is basically taking the little amount of pigment left on the brush and just constantly pulling it towards the, uh, the rocks. So, um, and it'll create a mild color transition effect. It's not going to be nearly as good as an airbrush. We're doing two brush blending, but it will be uh, super passable and it's a lot quicker for especially uh, an army that let's say you want to get done for like tabletop method. Um, I find it to be uh, usually my go-to. And most of the time, it's just easier for me. So like I want to be lazy. So once again, I'm going to put some paint there. You can even like wash your brush instead of licking it, but you know, I'm just going to lick it. And I'm dragging it towards that center mass of rocks. Uh, so one of the things I can do and I'm thinking about doing is letting some of that original like reds and things like that come through. And so what that'll allow or it should give some interesting effects to the, uh, the rocks as I apply like the washes and the dry brushes to it. Once again, I'm feathering towards the center mass. Um, you can also feather the model by uh, putting a thin layer of paint, uh, getting some feathers from your craft store, and throwing feathers on the model after the paint is still wet and drying. Right, Joe? Exactly. That's uh, Emily's method of feathering. Oh, getting feathers? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Simple, but effective. Yeah. All right. So that's most of the rocks on his back. Wasn't nearly as much as I thought, but hey, that's actually really good. Um, but one thing I did forget about is his big club that he's wielding. So I want to do that mix again. So 50-50, um, Crick's Bane highlight, and you know, third Thornwood green. Are these trolls invincible to, or immune to spider venom? Um, mm, so, no. All right, so in the fluff, they find power in spider venom, oh. but it also kind of drives them crazy. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So after a long enough period of time of ingesting spider venom, a troll might succumb to madness. Um, trolls are, however, much more resilient than the goblins that they follow into battle. So it might take a troll much longer. 
to come. Or, you know, they might even be too stupid to actually notice if they are mad or not. Is that centipede he's holding? Yep. Oh, wow. There's a centipede getting up in his business, and his business was a little too much for that centipede. And this is this is a this is a signal, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, Chris, I like P3 paints probably the most, um, but I am not married to them yet. P3, I don't have a ring on this finger. Um, but um, they generally have the consistency I'm looking for, and I like their bright saturated colors. Um, Games Workshop has a lot of great options though, and they have a lot of great technique paints. I don't branch out um, probably enough into Army Painter and other brands like AK to really like have a strong opinion on them. Um, Army Painter, I like their range of colors, but their paints to me, for whatever reason, feel chalky, and I'm not a big fan of chalky, chalky paints. So, yeah. So, I would, I generally recommend Games Workshop paints to people who start painting, uh, just because they have a lot of great guides on how to use their paints. Um, but, um, generally, like, once you get a good idea, it's pretty easy for you to kind of figure out the brand that works best for you. And since I like to thin down my paints a lot anyways, Games Workshop is usually a little too thick for me and P3 like I can paint with out of the bottle sometimes if I need to Games Workshop I just can't do it anymore unless it's like a wash um, and you're not even really supposed to paint out of the bottle anyway so you know YOLO nope if I see you painting out of the bottle Joe I'm going to slap that bottle off the table Right. get a palette thin right. your paints Right. Um, note to self, um, don't dip, double dip into, don't even dip into paints. Oh, double dip, is it? Painting out? No, double dipping is when you're, like, eating chips. True, but you can still, like, you can double dip in the sense of, I mean, not double, double dip, but mixing the paint by different, you know. Joe, if I put my hands on your hip and I dip, would you dip? I'm uncomfortable how this conversation is going. We dip. <laughs> What? Cheese, cheese dips? What? Cheese dip, Joe. Oh, cheese dip, okay. Um, I'm using gray for the trolls. Um, mainly, they have... I actually like the, tra the gray a lot with how it took this magenta pigment. Um, but generally, um, I like doing black prime or even xenithal uh, more than just doing... Um, straight up like black or gray um, but this the standard Mechanicus gray prime that I did um, I'm really enjoying it so now I'm doing my second coat on the rocks on his back um, this is just to kind of reinforce that color um, make sure that it is strong and it is going to be ready for its uh, dry brushing And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, and while I'm waiting for some of the other paint to dry, I'm actually going to apply some down in the base area. And since it's a mid-tone like the gray that I have already done, it is really receptive of the gray. So, I know it's over the oh, sorry. Yeah, Army Painter washes are really good. Um, whoever does their formula for it uh, is top top notch. Um, but I do like Games Workshop washes a lot too, just because um, that's what I have trained myself on. It's like your first love, GW washes. Um, even even when I decide to move to other paint lines, I will always keep GW washes in stock. 
So yeah, um, I'm being a little careful of, oh, I just hit his toenail. Uh, I was gonna say of the trog boss as I'm applying gray to his base. Um, but you know, you can't always be 100%. So sometimes stuff happens. Uh, Joe, did you, you, Joe, you look like you got something to say. Well, I was sorry. Tell was me what's on your mind. I was gonna say something, but uh, I, had to, I had a question about the dry paint. What do you mean by a question about dry paint? Well, what is it used for? What is for it the for? Games Workshop dry paint, yeah, the it is specifically designed to be used in dry brushing. So okay. you can dab your brush into the dry paint and then immediately start dry brushing the model with it. That's its okay. uh, attempt okay. or what it is theoretically designed for. Um, that is probably one of the technical paints that I do not use a lot of. Um, just because I don't need paint specifically designed to dry brush, because I can dry brush with most other varieties of paint. So. All right. Well, that's that. How about glazed? Um, I glaze a whole heck of a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing all. I'm seeing all those paints over there. I'm trying to familiarize myself. With what so else. glaze is a technique, more than it is a product. Okay. So, and what that means is. Um, Glaze is when you thin down a color enough to make it transparent. So when you apply it over a model or over a different color of paint, it will slightly shift that paint towards the color of the glaze. So that's what I did on the back of the trolls, right? I wanted the back to be more purple, so I used a purple wash from Games Workshop, but the technique I was using was glazing. Um, and glazing can be used anything from shading a model, um, like a wash, just changing the color tone of it. Okay. Um, and that's what I usually use inks for. Um, or you can use it for highlighting or color transitions. Um, so glazing is just thin, thin paint used to shift colors. For any reason, Joe. For any reason. Oh, I think I'll just stick with the base and the layers for now. Base, layers, and washes are going to be your friends. Okay. Oh my god. Uh, Joe, don't stare directly at the fluorescent paint. You might go blind. Joe, I said not to look at them. <laughs> Joe, no! <laughs> Whoa, Can I take these and uh, color a lightsaber with them? Absolutely. Yeah, so so I have some more coming in. It's the, um, what we're talking about is the Green Stuff World fluorescent paints. Yeah. Uh, I actually don't know if the camera will capture how fluorescent that is. No, because this, this, no, no, this camera can't possibly capture or contain the image. Yeah, brightness. Yeah, because it's got a ghostly Javier Bardem on it. This is the one from Pirates of the Caribbean. But these floor colors are great for doing glow effects. Anything that you wanted to do, super saturated colors, like Joe saying with lightsabers. It's perfect for lightsabers because you can paint something white and then apply that floor paint over it. And the floor is, once again, um, it's already a very thin paint. So what you're doing is glazing over the white with that fluorescent color to make a glow effect. I'm going also to try UV. to do, I have a Luke huh? It's UV like reactive. Oh yeah, it, it, and it also will, uh, when we throw our first uh, black light rave, uh, uh, a war machine tournament, uh, Ryan will be the only army visible. <laughs> so I'm planning on... I'm going, to, I'm going to do this. I have a Luke Skywalker figure and a Darth Vader, Darth Vader, Darth Vader figure. Yeah, that actually would work really well for the Legion. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, yeah no. Like, like, honestly, if you're painting something with a lot of glow effects, yeah. look into the floor paints uh, from Green Stuff World. It will probably save you a lot of hassle and uh, headaches. Um, also, I'm kind of serious about doing a black light tournament. Um, we're gonna have a strobe light. Strobe we're gonna have a strobe light, <laughs> and um, everyone who pays entry fee fee gets a free pacifier yes. and glow stick. Player, son. Uh, I, I, did you see the? Uh, what is Can it? we get Keenan to be a uh, uh, DJ? He's the Fleur you know, he's the Fleur Fairy. Oh yeah, he will be the Fleur Fairy. Uh, we need to get someone to DJ. Maybe maybe it'll be Joe. We got Drew. Oh yeah, Drew. I forgot Drew used to DJ. 
Oh, nice. Uh, Drew, if you ever have a minute, has had a nice and eclectic life. Um, he has probably worked in more industries and weird, odd jobs than anyone else I know. And all of his stories are beyond interesting. Um, I'm using like my mixing brush, which is usually just kind of like my beater brush to uh, quickly apply this base color uh, to the rest of the base because um, I'm a little OCD about it and I feel like getting this like base in will make me feel like this model is probably more finished than it is. Um, also, with all the detail that I have running around on this base, or on the model itself, it's probably going to be really good to get the actual base done so I can come in and paint the details and not have to worry a lot about, um, you know, nicking details later um, by trying to paint the base. Yeah, that's a, ooh. yeah uh, Ryan's Ryan's multicolored crab jacks. This is what we're talking about black light tournaments. Don't 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 don't. Um, he's also using the XL handle, which works fantastic on uh, heavy war jacks for war machine. All right, I'm gonna hand this back before I ruin it for Ryan. <laughs> I'm just afraid it's gonna fall off and like murder yeah. one of your shrugs off right there. <laughs> no, it's fine. They're big, big metal <laughs> mini falling on those. They'll, they'll regenerate <laughs> after I cry on them. I worked so hard on it. The hours spent. I uh, I have learned long ago to never get too too attached to your minis. Well, isn't that what, you told me a story, that's one of the things you did talk to in art class was to build something and then destroy it, yep. but tear it down so you don't get connected get connected with your art. Yep, it's a very important lesson, and um, I still kind of cherish it to this day. Oh, man, now, I think that's part of the rock. Let's, let's, let's do it. Anyways, yeah. Hey, uh, Drew, if we do a black light rave tournament, could you come and DJ? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right. Lights, go six. I'm. No, no, we did not install a light switch. We did a light switch. Maybe we can get some uh, techno battle music going. You know, like some. You need to be the blur fairy. <laughs> Drew, do you think they have like techno ba uh, battle music, like epic, uh, those epic war music for uh, techno oh, stuff? Sure. Yeah. yeah. We, we could do. We have those. Oh parties, man, uh, Ryan, what we could do is treat it like those black light parties where we just prime all of our models white. And we just like tarp over the tables, yes. and we take turns just like whipping floor paints around. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh. So yeah, guys, uh, we have fun, and we like to come up with new tournament concepts. So uh, I think thank this, is, this is one of the best ones we've had yet. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, if you guys would like a black light uh, floor rave tournament for any game system please let us know um so i'm waiting for the stone to dry on the uh trog boss so i'm going to come in and start doing the stone on my other trolls um and this will mostly be on the weapons and uh the big boulder that this one guy's throwing because i want all the the gemstone effects to be very uh bright and I think they're going to be bright, bright green. Maybe not fluor green, but um, there's different realms in this game, and armies can be from any realm. And Giran is the realm of life, which I find to be like kind of trolly. You know, trolls are always regenerating, adapting to their environment, and that kind of screams realm of life. 
you think that's fair, Ryan? I can see where you're going with that. It's either Realm of Life or Realm of Beasts. So it's either going to be bright glowing orange rocks or bright, bright glowing green rocks. And I think with the magenta, the green will work out a little bit better. The green might be a little confusing with uh, Skaven seeing the resurgence. Oh green, yeah, warp, warp stone. stone. You know, you know what? I, uh, I s All right, cool. I see what you did there. So we're going to go with beasts. Realm of beasts. That's probably where their home's at anyways. Um, the realm of beast is uh, the home of the amber mages. So the stones themselves will be amber, which will be great anyways because... You know, what comes from Amber? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Dino DNA. Yep. Jurassic Park taught us enough. Do you theoretically, potentially, maybe, clone dinosaurs? Listen, we can't clone dinosaurs. We can, however, backwards engineer dinosaurs. Yep. Halfway there, it's true. Whoa. I like that. Living on a Sorry. I like that uh, line from Jurassic World where the guy is like, beep. It can be real in our in our hearts. In our hearts. The real Jurassic Park was the friendships made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So once again, these guys are going to be from the realm of beasts because uh, Amber and uh, I had some excellent input from Ryan and Joe. So I appreciate that, guys. You're welcome. I'm here to help you. I don't believe that for a second, but... Oh. What can I do to prove it to you? Maybe it's not a bad question. Yeah, Joe, how, <laughs> how deep are your pockets there, bud? Um, do you, uh, do you remember the scene from my, uh, Mary Poppins where she takes out the lamps and they have a So bag. you can pay me in lamps? Yes, I can pay you in lamps. Cool, I will take one dinosaur-themed lamp. I'll see what I can find on Amazon. Sweet. You can find a lot. They're at Target. Oh, are they? What? Is it? Oh, Jurassic Park lamps? No. No. It's like children's dinosaur. No. Yeah, I already got a T-Rex lamp at home, so don't get me a T-Rex one. Okay. Oh. Why am I not surprised that you have a T-Rex lamp at home? Because I'm a man of conviction. Do you have one of those amber cane, walking canes? that? Are no. That? I you, wish. You have? Okay. If you had one, would you take it everywhere? Um, anywhere that I needed a cane for. I don't think would you, I... Would you maim yourself so that you would need a cane? So that you could then use it everywhere you went? No, nah, I'd rather just fake it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Fake it till you make it. Man, this paint's bright. Cool. It's fine, Ryan. You'll never lose those models. Nope. <laughs> uh, man, it fell on the floor. Oh, turn on the black light. I actually need to get me one of those uh, paint handles. I like, like that. I like that. Are they useful? Yeah, no, they're yeah really good. The, the paint handles are really good. I should be using the paint handles on this so I stop like hitting the edges of my models and kind of scuffing paint off. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to be a little bit quicker. Oh, uh, can you uh, pass um, one of your jacks over here, Ryan? Oh, Jack, coming back. All right, so this is this is Ryan's crab jack, and it's on the XL painting handle, and it fits heavy war jacks uh, pretty sturdily. And by the way, this is the all metal Leviathan, yep. so it keeps its hold, and it is above my delicately painted models, and it is holding just fine. Uh, I trust the hold on the handle more than I trust the uh, the glue. Yeah. So, um, if you guys want to paint your heavy war jacks, this also works great for like. Um, Light war beasts, heavy war beasts, um, anything 40 to like 60 millimeter bases for war machine hordes. Um, works great for dreadnoughts and things like that for uh, Games Workshop. Um, you can get the regular one for your basic troopers, and the basic it goes all the way up to uh, 40 millimeters on the basic one, so it'll be like 25 to 40 millimeters. So, um, yeah, this is the basic one. So, God. Ryan's paint jobs are absolutely amazing, and the colors just get washed out on camera. Yeah, they do. But, uh, guys, come in and see them in person. Be, be wowed and amazed. The fun. Unconventional, but fun. I like it. <laughs> but the wrong one unconventional. Point. Exactly. The whole point. But still, contrast one another. 
Well, see, maybe you just this guy who can get some cotton candy, look to it. Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, he's going there. This guy who got it. Cotton candy. All right. Half of our uh, painting tiles here are going to blow in the dark after <laughs> I'm done here, John. Da 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 da. Which, which song is that, John? Uh, Darude Sandstorm. Yeah, we definitely gotta make make this tournament glow thing happen. We. <laughs> I was thinking about having a uh, painting lock-in before ATC this year. So maybe we can do that and. Uh, stream it, maybe do a charity event or something. I like the idea of that. I actually remember a game called Nexus Off, the first edition. They had game pieces that actually was translucent. So when you put a black light underneath, underneath they glowed in the dark. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And then they replace him with solid plastic, which a lot of people were disappointed about that, but oh well. Do, 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 do. These grays over magentas are going to take a little bit, but nothing a couple of thin coats can't do. Uh, Mark's not here right now, Kurt, but um, I'm sure he will be your personal hand model if you need to. Need to have that. Um, but you got to pay his manager, which is me, money. I, I ain't letting Mark do work without pay again. And that costs all the other benefits, right? What other benefits? Uh, whatever you negotiate. If you're the need to negotiate for. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What, Direct TV? What was that, Tropic Thunder? Was those things of Tropic Thunder? <laughs> I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen that movie. Yeah, it's like, you know, he's... What was it? E. 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 e McGregor, not e. McGregor. Matthew McConaughey's character is like, my client wants, wanted Direct TV. Uh, the bellies of the dude was a mix of Menoth White Bass and uh, Bogren Brown from P3. Uh, and then I slowly started mixing in more Menoth White Bass and then Menoth White Highlight. And yeah, eventually the final highlight was just Menoth White Highlight. Uh, I always hate, like, needing a thin brush to dodge fingers. I, I still don't know how people can do all the detailed stuff. Um, it's practice. So, Joe, you too will be able to get to this level. Um, just as long as while you're painting, you are paying attention to what you are doing and how you are applying it and figuring it out. Um, because you can also like paint, practice your brush strokes on another sheet of paper. Like you can just grab a sheet of paper, grab some paint and some brush. You can just practice drawing lines or doing like sweeping motions or arcs and things like that. And what that will do is it will give you mu muscle memory. So then like when you're like, I need to make this kind of line, your hand already knows how to do that, right? Because you practice it so much. It's the same reason why you practice martial arts, right? No, just writing in general. Like, yeah, exactly. So. It is something that you can do. It just requires practice. Okay. And I know it, you have it within you to do so. So do I choose a base for that? Do I choose a glaze, a shade? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, either one. You know, like anything that you can clearly see what you're doing. Okay. So white on white? You got it. <laughs> you figured um, it out. I'm just kidding. I'm being silly. Um, okay. All right, let's mix a little bit of wash for, well, let's see. 
I have a beat up brush. I still have some of this paint left. I'm gonna do a little bit of base painting while I'm here. We only have a couple minutes left, so I don't wanna like move on to like a whole new step and then lose you guys. So in the last couple minutes, I'm just going to be nicely painting in their bases, which will help define the rest of the model. And I'll also kind of like draw more attention to the skin, oddly enough, because uh, the rocks have kind of taken in that skin tone color because of the airbrushing. Um, but painting the base will kind of pop out that skin a little bit more. Seems weird, having less of it on the base makes it more impactful. So yeah, um, as always, I like to see what people are working on. Um, I do appreciate everyone using the Gigabytes painting uh, thread and such. So if you guys have time to drop your in-progress works there, um, I might take next week to show off a couple of them on stream, if it's at all possible. And um, yeah, um, maybe that'll start something new, part of the paint stream, a little bit of a review and uh, little community corner for gigabytes so as I'm rounding out this next one unless we got any last minute comments questions concerns how do you do's or anything like that we will take off from this point so thank you everyone for coming in watching my paint stream um, I really do appreciate it we definitely will keep live from four o'clock. Um, we'll always start around four o'clock, maybe sometimes a little earlier, sometimes a little later. Just depends on how the great internet gods are doing. Um, but please tune in. Um, feel free to shoot me messages in the meantime, especially uh, techniques or questions or things you want to see on the paint stream. Cause if not, I will just paint the models I have. But if you guys have questions, um, please ask and I will attempt to cover it on stream. So until next time, uh, what did Bob Ross say? Happy painting? Let's go with that. Happy painting, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.